He poured his cruelty, his malice, and his will to dominate all life. But it was a great way to start these movies. This quick, I mean, for those who hadn't read Tolkien, to, to be able to really, in a very short economical period of time, they set the stage. You know exactly what's going on. Three lands of Middle Earth fell to the power of the ring, but there were some who resisted. I always did yeah. like the fact that this takes place like two and a half thousand years before like the <laughs> present, and yet technology has not advanced a single bit in that entire time. Yeah, yeah that's like every single fantasy series. Yeah, ever. That, yeah. It's just yeah. time lock for eternity. <laughs> I love that that scene where they all just like swing their swords in unison. It's like this giant machine, like meat grinder. Yeah. Yeah, it's so cool. What do you guys think about having Sauron personified as a single figure? I didn't love it, but I, I get why it was necessary on screen just to give you mm -hmm. some sort of like give the audience some kind of representation of it i'm really glad that they didn't go with the original idea to have aragorn fight him i agree with that yeah Sword yeah definitely, oh, definitely. Yeah. i remember when this came out and the discussions that were being had because it's so damn good the amount of problems people will have with it are very weird and specific and i remember people being like do you think it's a little goofy that it's a big tower with an eye that's the bad guy isildur son of the king took up his father's sword it no. is something to chew on, like, it does, I haven't read the books, it is a bit different, but yeah, yeah. pretty good with it. But you have other characters, like what, when, when like, uh, Elrond says his eye is focused. Is it Elrond who says his eye is focused here? You have other characters saying it, and it sounds cool Well, that's the thing, it. right? The world treats it very fucking seriously, that eye. Yeah. The ring passed to Isildur, who had this one chance to destroy evil. Forever. I, I like how the eye, while it's not an eye on top of a tower in the book, they did take the imagery from a scene in the book and just repurpose it so that yep. there's a physical presence of him in the movie. It betrayed his Hildor <laughs> to his death. Like Frodo obviously sees it more and more as the ring takes hold of him. And like every time he closes his eyes, he sees the, the eye watching him. And for two and a half thousand years, the ring passed out of all knowledge. Man, though, this is, for anyone who's completely unaware of Lord of the Rings, what an opening in terms of just it's like, holy good shit. For 2000. It ensnared a new bearer. The year 3434 of the Second Age here follows the account of the Sealed High King of Gondor. They Plus are thing. covering Orgel. so much time here. They're covering yeah. almost two decades here. <laughs> yeah. I remember finding yeah. out about that when I was super young. I was like, what? It's like, yeah, what happens here? Gandalf fucks off for a long time. Yeah. It has come to me. The One Ring, it should be an heirloom of my kingdom. Frodo leaves yeah. when he's 50, okay? Yeah, uh, it's like a solid 30 years between chapters. But it's an elegant way of, of making yeah. changes in a sort yeah. in source material that doesn't necessarily really have that much of an effect, but you have to understand how to do it well. Precious to me. We still don't really know who the ring race. There were just kings of men. Not all of them were kings of men. Some of them might have been sorcerers too. But um, there is letters and stuff that one. There might be some former Numenorians in there. Yeah. Uh, and, again, and so uh, uh, yeah, and that's death. enough to know that they were great, yep. powerful leaders, sorcerers, the witch king of Angmar, like great stuff. You just know that when Rings of Power t deals with this, they're going to be like a bunch of. What you're heading towards, Drinker, I imagine, is like yeah, they'll be blacker. very selfish, very greedy leaders or something. And it'll be like, yeah, see, they, they fell because they were flawed. They'll be small as well. They'll just seem small people. Yeah. And they want to everything power. in that show seems small. It, well, it, that's, the, that's the thing. That's the nuance of Lord of the Rings. A lot of people consider it a very simple story, but like I feel like a lot of this is telling us like very good people can have flaws that can lead to very dark paths if they're not you know, stalwart sort of thing, but there's always a way back, that sort of stuff. Maybe they'll do the same thing that Shadow of War did and make a sealed or one of the Nazgul. That was cool. That was totally not infuriating. At all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, his character in Rings of Power was very confusing and contradictory. I completely forgot oh, a sealed right. was even in it. it Jesus. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, everyone did. Power. I guess in the book you get more from this, like they actually get them from a, a little adventure that they go on. There's a whole thing where they have to fight like um, barrel whites, like these like yeah, undead the, creatures, down. which is kind of cool, but it does have Tom Bombadil in it as well. So Do when yeah.
When you're one of the I mean, Nazgul at this point, you're like, do you think this is unfair? <laughs> <laughs> they jumped over Frodo selling his house, moving to Buckland, Barrow Downs, Tom Bombadil, a bunch of stuff. Do you think of that? Uh, it's stuff like that that made the fans, when first seeing this, a bit apprehensive about praising it. <laughs> I know some people were still like on edge about whether or not this was a great adaptation. I think there was an acknowledgement like they were going to have to cut some stuff. Like there was no way they could fit all of yeah, this like, in. Yeah, like the whole Tom Bombadil chapter has basically fuck all to do with literally yeah. anything in that whole trilogy. Like there's a point where at the end of Two Towers, in the book it's paced a little bit differently because at the end of Two Towers is when Sam and Frodo are in Shelob's lair. Sam has a line where he's like, man, I wish Tom was here. And I had to like take a moment to be like, who the fuck is Tom? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good trivia question. What's mm -hmm. Arwen's horse's name? Rumsfeld. It's supposed to be Glorfindel. That's a kind of funny name. You know, like Nazgul is one of the coolest fucking names in fantasy. Glorfindel is is not as cool. It's not. It's a little. It's a little. Uh, okay. Well, Glorfindel's there's... the name of the the goofy elf. The <laughs> yeah, the elf. elf. Uh, Tolkien did make literally the funniest name ever written in the history of fantasy. Which one? Teleporno. <laughs> Teleporno. <laughs> <laughs> I, I shit you not, that's a real... I, I think that's like... That's what I do, like, four hours a day, uh, teleporno. That... I love that name. <laughs> teleporno is amazing. Is it a spell? <laughs> Tolkien was a visionary. She took all of Glorfindel's action. a change I'm actually okay with because she has like yeah. no characterization whatsoever in the books. I think she only None. appears in like one page of Fellowship and like a couple pages in Return of the King and that's it. Whereas Glorfindel basically is only relevant for the this one chapter. I'd rather have more development for someone that Aragorn is attached to so we get more for him than have Glorfindel who oh, is set on fire. No, that, that would have well, been a tough I shot. Would, I, I recall a certain OneRing.net site in their in their forums bitching like hell about how much Arwen was in this, and to see them two decades later completely <laughs> back rings of power was just glorious. We used yeah, to hate women openly back then. Not a seal door there, not a seal door himself. You are not bound to his fate. Is the Silmarillion audiobook out yet? Because I feel like that's the only way I'm actually going to be able to get through the whole thing. Uh, yeah, I think it is. I'll have to give that a shot. Because I've tried to read it and I just find it kind of boring to read. I respect it as a piece, but, you know, it's just not fun. It's, it's more me. of a law uh, book, right? Or... It's a history book about fake things, which is fine, yeah. but it's not I very do. fun to read. In it is, some of the stuff is epic. Like absolutely epic, but it's it's uh it's just it's told to you as opposed to shown to you for yeah, a lot yeah. of it. Which is fine for what it is. It's just not something that I personally find very interesting to read. You waste the same evil and you will I can't believe as well that this nope. era was also around about the time we got the best license games for movies. There was a lot of cool license games in yeah. the 2000s. There was plenty of shit. Rings Game Boy games was. were fire. It's, it's, it's crazy because um, looking back, like the amount of effort they put into the Lord of the Rings ones for like intertwining clips from the movies, recreating the scenes from the movies into the games to then stitch the scenes together to create a narrative, a mechanical like system to approach and then have it be a satisfying game for fans was fucking crazy. And you think about it, it's like, we lost that and there wasn't it before. It's like that was just a little point in time where you, whatever movies really were coming out, watch. got to have that. Yeah, that. That's just not a thing that happens anymore. Well, uh, anything really licensed watch. for like film connection, like that Marvel's Avengers game, if you count that, uh, or whatever, it's like that was a fucking disaster to the point where it's, it's not even available anymore, right? I like said company in bankruptcy. Game. Yeah, crazy. It, cost it, God, it was some ridiculous amount of money. Yeah, and uh, you know, across the all the knowledge of. Lord of the Rings lore of everything. Like, Bilbo is a fucking strong, resilient character. Absolutely. And Frodo putting his hand on his shoulder and that, that reaction yeah. was so good. Yeah. The ring bearer is setting out on the quest of Mount Doom. No oath nor bond is laid to go further than you will. See, it's interesting because in the book, he hasn't aged yet. So he's still as he was when he left the Shire. And he's initially geared up and ready to go. Like, he wants to be the one to carry the ring to, yep. to Mordor. And they have to, like, convince him not to. It's like, no, you've passed it on now. It's got it's got a new bearer and you can't handle this now. May the blessings of elves and men and all free folk go with you. 
I think that would have been a great scene as well. But uh, obviously, I love mm-hmm. what they did. Oh, we I will someday hope. when they remake it. Make no. It to a streaming series. Never touch <laughs> these. I feel like the, the world would fucking vomit if they remade these. Silver ones. had a set of mithril rings that Thorin gave him. Oh, that was a kingly gift. Yes. But also, what a cool steep ass stick. What about a sword uh, of mithril? Do they have that? I never told him. But its worth was greater than the value of the shire. This thing might be a sword made with mithril. To answer a question from earlier, maybe. They have a cave troll. Well, it just comes across like adamantium, vibranium. You know, you'd think yeah. there'd be a mithril sword. This imagery, incredibly important. Scouring of the Shire, correct? Or at least a foreboding yeah, of the potential. We could either talk about now or later, but the choice to remove oh, the scouring like a Tim of the Burton Shire. It was funny. I, did, I didn't really love that whole section from the strange. books either. Works in the book, wouldn't work in the film. <laughs> but that's another one fans would have been like, they fucked it up. Yeah. They fucked it up. And it's like, like calm down, know, calm guys. down. It's like the Bombadil thing. It's like, it's weird that we met God in the woods all of a sudden. <laughs> that's kind of weird. We should probably just not have that in the movies. He will try to take the ring. You know of whom I speak. Like, the thing is, is like, I think Tom Bombadil is just straight up a plot hole in the book because he, <laughs> because weird. like, he literally just puts on the ring and he's fine and nothing happens. And like, they're just like, yeah, he just like kind of doesn't care. And it's like, that, that, that yeah. the explanation. One by one, it will destroy them all. I do like the fact that, like, you get to the, the Council of Elrond and, like, they do bring him up, because, like, that was my thought. It's like, okay, if this thing has no power over him, then surely he can just go to more. Uh, it's like Mordor the perfect ring bearer. Yeah. Yeah. I will give you the one ring. You offer it to me freely. He just doesn't fucking feel like it, and it's like, whoa. Yeah, okay. he's really okay. absent-minded, and he would probably forget what he's doing halfway there and just, like, drop it or something. In place of a dark lord, you would have a queen! He's a higher being that might be a remnant of the Song of Creation, or he was a lot like Treebeard. Treebeard's, you know, an old, ancient being. Not dark, but beautiful and terrible as the Lord! Who gets and he fucking And it shouldn't have been pissed. in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the end result speaks for itself. This part stood out yeah. to me as a kid when I first watched it. I was like, what the fuck is happening? It's terrifying. Yeah, but, but... People can try to pick it apart. And, and like, I sat behind somebody. When I was watching it the first time, I sat behind somebody who hated it. Freaking hated it. He's like, that sucked. I'm like, what? I passed the test. Oh, the reason the guy hated it because of the changes they made to the book. That's the thing, right? It's like, when it's this good as an adaptation, all of the smaller things are going to niggle at you and be like, eh. I will diminish and go into the West and remain Galadriel. I have a controversial take in thinking that there's things that this movie just straight up did better than the book. To bear a ring of power is to be alone. And if you do not find a way, no one will. Because I think Ooh. some of the parts of the book uh, kind of yeah. aged poorly. But granted, they were kind of like products of their time because books were written right really the differently 50s, then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, again, like the standards then. Boromir was done better in the movie. I think the Aragorn end. was done the better end. in the movie. Yeah. I think Aragorn is straight up kind of boring in the book. Oh my god. Are we entering hot takes that I've never even heard before? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like the, the books are great, but like they're not perfect. All right, everyone needs to relax. this. Even the smallest person can change the course of the future. I mean, the same thing can be said for the films, the but death. they may as well be. <laughs> yeah, it's like, but you know, Bor- Bormir's death was handled better in the movie. I think um, the f- breaking of the fellowship was also handled better in the movie. Like the emotion with Frodo and Sam at that end is so much more palpable in the film than it was in the book, where it just kind of felt like, oh, Sam was an idiot and is drowning now. Do you know how the orcs first came into being? Frodo's way more abrasive in the book. It, it's way he more is. master a lot of the, and servant relationship a, at first. So a lot of the yeah. characters, like Faramir and Aragorn, seem like more relatable in the movies than they do in the book. They were elves once, taken by the dark powers. Like Aragorn in the book, just straight up, he's like, "Yeah, I'm king. Get over it." Yeah, there's a, there's definitely less self doubt in the book. It, yeah, there's like one a man really on a mission. Tortured 
and mutilated, ruined and terrible form of life. There's one really funny scene in the two towers in the book where Aragorn tells all the Rohirrim, like, this sword is super fucking cool. Don't touch it. And then he just kind of leaves it outside with them. And I just imagine, like, all of them poking <laughs> it as soon as he goes through the door. Yeah. <laughs> Gollum. He has tracked us since morning. I can't even remember what the theatrical versions are now. You haven't eaten anything all day. And you're not sleeping either. Don't think I haven't noticed. I've only watched the theatrical of Fellowship. And it was just, like, weird seeing it because it's like mm -hmm. where's all the fucking scenes that are important to the story i'm here to help you i promised gandalf that i would because of course there was a reason that the theatrical cuts ended up being the way that they were but i mean now now that the extended exists and you can watch it you can't help me sam not this time well, yeah, that's funny because yeah. like I bought the 4K physical release of the movies, and it's like we got the theatrical editions in here too, and it's like, well, I'm just gonna throw those away. Oh, I know. This tooth is a safer road. You know that. From there, we can regroup. I thought this is kind of when everything starts to break apart. Like Gandalf's not yeah. there to keep them together, so now they're like fraying at the edges. A lot happens in this film. A lot does happen in this film. In peace, son of God. I would fucking hope a lot happens in a three and a half hour runtime. Well, it's kind of a brought up Take a lot these granted. days, right? Because um, a lot of people resort to a runtime complaint with films that are of that length. They will look for his coming from the White Tower, but he will not return. But we all know the truth of it would be pacing. And like how much of it was actually like important. Frodo! Just fucking, how much of Zack Snyder's Justice League is even remotely relevant? <laughs> oh no. I wish none of this had happened. So do all who live to see such times, but that is not for them to decide. I mostly have resentment toward him for wasting four and a half hours of my time. He brought us Ezra Miller. As a little tucker in the in the cinema, I didn't know that Gandalf was coming back, even with that scene. I was like, oh, that's what really? happened. Really? You didn't pick up on that from that what scene? Do you mean? What? Well, he was two years old, okay? <laughs> I, that is true, yeah. <laughs> Can you see the bottom? Don't look down, Sam! Just keep going! Some of us were, some of us were young. <laughs> I don't know well, that, like... I was old, okay, and I'm even older now, and Gary can I'm just amused by the fact that fell so... down a pit means he died, but fell down fighting a dragon means he lived. <laughs> if the movie chooses to show you that, but leaves it unresolved as to what happened to him, I think you can assume something's gonna come out of it. It's I mean, not technically, just, they just kicked the can down the road. He's still... Tell us what you think in the comments section below. Fight, fight. <laughs> Real Elvis rope. I know we kind of skipped over just that, that little bit there with the rope that it just magically detaches by itself and they kind of question like, well, okay, that we could have fallen at any moment. That's exactly from the books. It's elven rope and uh, yep. it's almost it's left magical. up to the, the audience to question. Yeah, like, uh, does it just do exactly what you want it to do? Wow. I so... think the best part of that scene, which is an extended scene, it's not in the theatrical version, is uh, Frodo saying that the 11 herbs and spices from the Shire are special. It's very special, that. It is special. It's a little bit of home. Fun fact as well, those spices can be used to make salt and pepper chicken. And that elven rope came from the hair of an ice troll. <laughs> and <laughs> just together. because we're machine gunning out, fun facts right now, this is the only Lord of the Rings film in the trilogy that nobody puts on the ring. Oh my god. Yes. Oh my goodness makes you gracious. Think. Makes you think. Wait, he almost, I mean, well, he, almost, he almost puts it on in Osgiliath, doesn't he? When the... He doesn't, because he's a lame loser. Oh, yes, lovely. Lambus bread. More lambus bread. It doesn't look very nice. No, it looks no. It looks like a fine. They're cracker. um. They're shortbread just, cookies. It's just, I it think it's a fine it cracker. Eggs. Like uh, the um, art department made them. I'm a good with lambus. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll have you know, I'm quite the cracker connoisseur myself. Oh my god! Crack the lands they stole from you. Yeah, rape and a pillaging. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. I'm just gonna assume that all these guys died. Probably. What? Yeah. What? What was the fate of the um, the wild men? Who took them out? I think they were they were still active until Return of the King in the books. They yeah. fought at the Battle of the Pelennor Fields. Yep. For oh, sure. Okay. Um, I think ultimately, like they made a truce or something with uh, with Gondor <laughs> and Rohan. Yeah. When Mordor was defeated, they were like, "Hmm, <laughs> we propose peace, gentlemen." There are dead things. 
dead faces in the water. Yeah, this is a little disconcerting. Dead faces Ooh, in the water. Yeah. This is the part I was so looking forward to. The dead marshes. I'm like, I can't yeah. wait to see this. It's great. It's it's such a great concept. Like yes, it is. Spirits of dead elves and men just from the Battle of the Last Alliance. Just Dude, there. and this had to come from his war, obviously, his World War One experience. Just yeah. Oh, yeah. Past Gotta be, yeah. Dead bodies. Isn't that a great line? As well. Hobbits go down to join the dead ones and light little candles of their own. Hobbits go down to join the dead ones and light candles of their own. Don't you open those eyes, buddy. Don't you do it. It does make you wonder what, what would have happened if they had gotten him. I suppose he drowns that and mean, then he becomes a part of it all, right? He lights the candle of his own. What happens to the ring, I wonder? What, yeah, if, one of like, them, what if the ghosts want the ring a lot? They put it Can on, put and then it on? Is, oh, Sauron is like, oh, shit, whoa, what the fuck? A, a spooky oh, ghost? I mean, it's like, yeah, wow. <laughs> it would probably make it easier for Sauron to find. I imagine, because yeah, the ghost yeah. can't really hold on to it very well. Something I love about the way they shoot that is the uh, the right. distances of the ghosts are really hard to make out quite deliberately. Yeah, yeah. like it feels well, like it's they're, right they're in front way too of big. you. Yeah. The evil is drawn to Sauron, so... I guess the ghosts look evil. They probably saw an adjacent. They're, what are saying? They're kind of, yeah. they're kind of like, yeah, we'll, we'll get yeah. this. Because ghosts are probably evil. Ghosts have a bad rap, but maybe there's a reason for that. Ghosts are all about that unfinished business, aren't they? Dead people are assholes. 